Hey everybody, welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on MM570, Applied Statistics for Psychology, and it's going to focus on how to find SPSS data in your classroom, how to open that data using SPSS, and then how to do a couple of descriptive statistics and maybe a graph or two. So once you enter your classroom, of course, the first thing you're always going to see is the announcements area. And you can see here that this is how I identify these types of how-to videos. So as our term goes through, always check out this area to see what's the new how-to videos that are available and how can they help me learn information, get through the discussion assignments, or even do a better job on the projects. So again, this how-to video is going to focus on data and SPSS. To find data in your classroom for your projects or for the discussion area, all the data that we have is located in the doc sharing area. So let's see where to find that. If I click on doc sharing, it brings me to two different category options. The first category is already selected and that's why it's in black and it's called MM570 and then some other info here. Under the first category, this is where you're going to find your discussion board SPSS files and it's zipped up. So this is called a zip file. So inside of here are many, many SPSS data files that you can use for all of your different discussion board assignments, but it's zipped up right now. So if I click this, what's going to happen is my computer which can automatically unzip files is going to say, do you want me to just open this up with the default? And of course, that's what I want it to do. However, when you click this, if you get an error, that means that you don't have the ability to unzip this file, but you're going to need to. So you want to immediately stop watching this video and contact tech support and have them help you to get that free option on your computer so that you can open up these zip files. Now assuming that you get to this spot and you can open up zip files, you'll click OK. And you'll see that the files automatically unzipped and if you double click, you'll see all the different SPSS data files that are now available to you. Your best bet is to copy and save these onto your computer in a location where you'll remember where they are. And you can name them like discussion SPSS data files or whatever you want to name them. Now, if you have SPSS installed on your computer and properly running, you can double click any one of these files and it will automatically open. For example, if I double click the bears file, SPSS will automatically open on my computer, like it's doing right now, and then it'll open up the BEARS dataset file. All SPSS files have this extension .sav. That's how you can identify them. And here's my BEARS dataset. I've got the age of the BEARS, the month, I've got male or female, head length, head width, and so on. If I click on Variable View, it shows me all the variables that are on this data set. I've got the age of the bear, the month, the sex, male or female, the head length, the head width, the width of the neck, and so on. So by clicking variable view on any of my data sets, I can see all the variables that are listed. I can learn what these variables mean. And I can even learn values. For example, if I look at the sex of a bear, if I click under values, I can see that one stands for male, and two stands for female. So anytime you need information about the variables in any of your data sets, you want to come to the bottom and click on the variable view. And then you can explore those variables. Now if I go back to data view, I have all the data in my data set. And let's say I wanted to make a pie chart or maybe calculate the mean, median, and mode. To do that, I would choose Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. Sorry about that. I love how my computer just decides to do things for me. When I choose frequencies, I can choose any of the variables in my data set, and then I can calculate any information about those variables. Like, let's say I'm interested in the length of the head of my bears, but also the length of the body of my bears. 
Notice I use this arrow to choose the variables that I want to focus on. Once I've chosen whatever variables I want to focus on, and you can choose as many as you want to, then I can click Statistics. This gives me the option of calculating the mean, median, mode, maybe the standard deviation, variance of the variables I've selected. I'll click Continue. Maybe I also want to build some charts. So let's say I want to have maybe bar charts of the variables I've chosen. And I'll click Continue and then OK. And SPSS works its magic and does all of this analysis for me automatically and then it creates these nice organized tables. Here's my mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and variance that I asked for for the length of the head and for the length of the body. I can see that the mean length of the head is 12.954 inches and that the length of the body is 58.617 inches and so on. If I wanted to copy and paste this into a Word document, I would click it with my right mouse button. I would choose Copy Special. I would choose to copy this as an image. Sorry, my computer really has a mind of its own. I would choose to copy this as an image, and then I would click OK. Once I do that, I can actually open up a Word document and I can right click and I can paste right into that Word document. And here's the two methods it's giving me. You can kind of see them appearing. I'll choose the first one and there's my statistics right in my Word document. Now let's see what else SPSS made for us. SPSS created for us some very beautiful bar charts. Here's a chart that shows the length of the head of the bear, and here's a chart that shows the length of the body. And in these cases as well, if I wanted to put these into a Word document, I would click the right mouse button, choose Copy Special, I would copy this as an image, click OK, and then again I would open up my Word document, And I would right click and paste. And if you hover your mouse over the paste options, it actually shows you the options as well, which is kind of cool. But I'll click that first one and then notice you can adjust the size if you want as well. So it's pretty easy to get stuff from SPSS into a Word document. Remember, in the discussion area, these images will not paste directly into the discussion area. It just doesn't work. So if you want to have an image as part of your discussion post, paste it into a Word document like this one and upload it as an attachment to your discussion board post. All right, so let's see what else we want to see for our example today. What have we done so far? Let's close that down. What we did so far is we went into the doc sharing, we unzipped the discussion board SPSS files, and we opened one in SPSS and we did some statistics. If I choose the second category called graded projects, I actually can see all four project assignments and the data set that is going to be used for all four projects called stat underscore grades. If I click stat underscore grades, I can open it directly with SPSS. I have version 19, but you probably have a newer version. If I click OK, SPSS will open up on my computer and it will open up my stat underscore grades data set, which is the data set that you're going to use for all of your projects. And again, you can do the same kind of statistics in here as well. So once you have SPSS up and running on your computer, make sure to take a moment, go into doc sharing, find and open both the data set for the projects, which is in the second category, and the data set for all the discussion assignments, which is zipped up and is in the first category. 
having the data available and knowing where to find everything in the class is really going to reduce your stress and get you ready to move forward in discussion assignments and projects. Good luck, and I'll see you in the classroom. Thanks for joining me.